Hey, welcome. We're in the middle of one of nature's most amazing chemical laboratories. There are thousands, millions of chemical reactions around. You can almost, almost hear those molecules buzzing as we speak. So stay tuned because today we're going to talk a little bit about two really fascinating reactions, photosynthesis and respiration. All of this phenomenal chemistry comes from almost one source, the sun. It's 93 million miles away, but it drives almost all of the energy, life-giving energy on this planet. And only a tiny percentage of the light hits Earth, and only a tiny percentage of that light is absorbed by trees and green plants, and it's that energy that runs the ecosystems on our planet. That energy only takes eight and a half minutes to get to Earth, but the energy from the sun can be transferred through the ecosystem for years. How do trees capture solar energy? Well, that's a pretty complicated set of physics and chemistry. Green plants and trees can't really use energy in the form of light. Now, the process of converting that light energy into chemical energy is called photosynthesis. Now that's a word that almost all of us have heard before. Photosynthesis is a two-part word. The photo part of the word means light, and the synthesis part means to make. So something is made using light energy. Do you know what that is, Georgia? Glucose. You mean like glue, sort of? No, like sugar. Oh. Like dextrose, maltose, fructose, all those oses. Sugars. It's sugars. Sugar, or glucose, is the product of a complicated chemical dance we call photosynthesis. Let's take a look at this photosynthesis dance with the help of the Lansing Derby fixins. We have three basic atoms in this dance. They're carbon atoms in black, oxygen atoms in blue, and finally hydrogen atoms in yellow. These three types of atoms get together to form two kinds of molecules, carbon dioxide and water. Out in the natural world, these atoms and molecules are just randomly floating around, minding their own business. But when we're talking about the photosynthesis process, these atoms gather together in the photofactory commonly called the leaf. We have the water molecules coming in from the roots and carbon dioxide from the air. Here's where the magic happens. When the leaf is exposed to sunlight, those molecules reassemble into a carbon ring with those oxygen and hydrogens coming along for the ride. The result? Glucose is produced. It's important to remember that photosynthesis produces glucose. It's not so much the oxygen. Yeah. Many of us think that trees are critical oxygen producers on our planet, but think about it that just a minute. What's most of the earth covered with? That's right, water. Glucose isn't the end of our energy adventure. Let's take a look at a chemical process called respiration. Respiration is essentially the reverse of photosynthesis, and glucose is like a battery. It stores energy until it's needed. When the glucose molecule breaks apart, energy is released. Atoms reform into carbon dioxide and water and go off on their merry way. Almost everything respires, and it's a chemical reaction, the reverse of photosynthesis, and photosynthesis stores all of that energy for all the life that occurs on Earth. So it's a pretty important process. Okay, I get it. So ecosystems depend on the sun mm -hmm. for all that energy, which is trapped, stored, and then later used for all kinds of processes for growing and doing other stuff, right? Right. So it's kind of like two different processes, photosynthesis and respiration, the energy sisters, if you will. The energy sisters. I like that. And that's right, Georgia. In fact, all the energy that we're using right now 
to watch this video or to eat or play or run down the street or anything else that we do was captured by green plants and that's where it came from. That's awesome. Just awesome. Really awesome. It's, a, it's awesome.